water tumble pebbles look magnificent, but some of them even have magical properties. To show you why, I'll need a flat surface, so you'll have to come with me. And here we have it. It's a tabletop. This one's plastic. Marble's great if you can get it, but this'll do. Glass is pretty good, too. Well, most stones, if you put them down, simply spin when you push them, like that. But these are the so-called magic stones. They used to be known as Celt stones, because Celtic stone axes did this. What do they do? You push them in a direction, they stop, and they bounce back at you. They reverse direction, a most mysterious property. Some of them even look as if they're on springs. Here's another one. In fact, today, their name is rattlebacks, and you can see why. You spin them, they become unstable, rock around the place, stop, wait for a moment, and back they go in the opposite direction. Most extraordinary things. Well, you can find them, but now we know enough about them to know they're not magic. They have certain properties, physical properties. And in fact, really, you really want to start, if, you, uh, if you're making them, with something like a spoon or an egg, which has a wide curve or broad curve in one direction, the length of it, and a rather tight curve in the opposite direction. That's the breadth of it. A spoon looks like that, and so, of course, does an egg. Well, let's start with the egg and see how you'd make your own rattleback. First of all, I've emptied out the contents of the egg through the side without cracking the shell. I've poured plaster into it to half fill it. If I break off that loose shell, and I don't want the chips everywhere or else they'll interfere with the way the rattleback performs, I can get rid of that and I've got a half egg weighted down with plaster. Now that on its own doesn't do anything except spin. The other property rattlebacks have to have is a, a weight distributed across them in a certain way. Let's say we used a nail. You mustn't put it from end to end in that fashion, right down the length of it. You have to put it diagonally like that, and you can tape it in position. The other thing is the egg, once the weight's in position, has to stand upright in that fashion. It has to balance, I should say, but the weight has to be diagonally across it. That's a bit easier if you see one I've already made. It's a rather clumsy affair. It's half an egg with a plaster in it. I've taped a punch and a nail there. But you can see they're actually not in line with the length of the egg. They're diagonally across it, and the egg sits flat in that fashion. Well, let's give it a spin, and we'll see what happens. We've got to go the right way, so let's try that. And yes, it's becoming unstable. It spins pretty well, rocks for a bit, and oh so sluggishly thinks about it and goes in the opposite direction. Not very well, but it made it. You can improve on that with a spoon. Actually, a plastic spoon is pretty good. If you get one here, a takeaway, break the handle off without cracking the bowl, and then file that rough bit on a bit of uh, wet and dry paper. I've stuck some on a board. It does a good job. Take the worst of it on the side and file the whole bit, bowl flat in this fashion. It takes a while, so here's one that I've finished. It's been uh, ground down like that. Off it comes, and that surface is flat, ready for the gluing. Okay? Well, the best way to put on that is a little bit of flat uh, plastic or card or even wood. And again, don't align it with a spoon like that. Put it at an angle and stick it on so that the whole thing is in balance. Like that. That will work beautifully if I'd had it stuck together. In fact, I've got one rather like that. Here it is. And if I spin it the right way, trial and error will show you which that is. Spin it, rocks around, becomes unstable, and goes in the opposite direction. And a metal spoon's even better. Here's a brass uh, spoon bowl that I've cut off. Done the same thing here. A good spin, thinks about it a bit, and reverses. Well, of course, the stones aren't shaped exactly like that, but they're basically the same. The thing to look for in a stone is one that's a bit like a propeller. It's got a slope coming up there, a slope going down there, and a ridge diagonally across the stone. Get one of those, and you've probably got a rattleback.